Welcome to day 10 and we will look at errors and debugging. Just to digress and how to make use of the video, one, we just watch the video like a TV program, two, you take notes with pen and paper, pausing the video intermittently, three, you open up the Python idle editor or the Python idle shell editor and type and run the examples. You can also run the video several times and do something different each time. It is important to realise you have flexibility and versatility. So types of errors or types of programming errors. And there are, there are three types really. There are the syntax error, which occurs when the rules of the grammar and structure of the programming language are violated. So what happens is you have a program and the program cannot even run because the rules of the grammar and structure of the language are not correct. They are violated. Two, you can have runtime error and this occurs whilst the program is running and the program effectively crashes. So unlike a program with a syntax error, the program does start to run, but the program then crashes. We will see examples of programs with syntax errors and runtime errors to make this a lot clearer. And then you have number three, the logical error or logic error. And it's a mistake in a program source code which results in an incorrect result. So what happens here, the program does in fact run, but it produces a result, an incorrect result, a result that you did not expect or want. Now associated with the concept of errors is debugging. So debugging is the process of identifying errors and then removing the errors from computer hardware or software. And in this case, we're talking about programs, really. So we're only really talking about software. So we could probably rewrite this definition in our context as the process of identifying and removing errors from computer software or computer programs. So let us look at the syntax error. And as we said before, a syntax error occurs when the rules of grammar and structure of the language of the programming language are violated. You are well advised to memorize the definition. And we will look at example one in a second, which is showing a incorrect variable name. And it is a type of syntax error. Example two, where we see a program with missing quotation marks. Example three, where we see a programming statement with missing colon. Example four, where we see a programming statement with incorrect indentation. And example five, a programming statement with missing parentheses. Now, the syntax errors are by no means limited to these types of examples, but these are common types of syntax error and hence we will show them in this video. So here we have the syntax errors. So example one, incorrect variable name. So we have bananas equals 12 and then we have print banana and the program comes up with an error message saying name banana is not defined because it is bananas. So if we say print bananas, then we get the value of 12. So here we have an example of an incorrect variable name. Now let us look at example two of missing quotation marks. Now if we write message equals int, enter a message, the program throws up an error saying syntax error, E-O-L while scan scanning string literal. Now this is quite a uh, esoteric uh, error message, but what it's trying to say is that we've got missing quotation marks here. 
So if we rewrite the statement here, saying message equals input, oh, also sorry, um, that should have been input, enter a message, open quotation marks, close quotation marks, the program runs, it says enter a message, we type in hello, and then print message, we can, the program outputs hello. Okay, now we have example three, that of a missing colon. Um, so we have for J in range one comma three, we press return and it comes up with invalid syntax. Well, it doesn't quite say missing colon. Uh, we have to know a little bit ourselves about this. It's a little hard to decipher what these error message messages are actually about. And with a bit of experience, you can actually decipher them. So then we write for J in range one comma three, and then we put colon and the next statement print J and the output of the program is one, two. So that's example three of a missing colon. Now we have example four, incorrect indentation here. So if we type in for J in range, one comma three colon print J, it comes up with a syntax error saying expected an indented block. So here, what we should actually have written for J in range one comma three, and then this print statement is indented. It's actually one sort of tab statement, print J, and the output is one, two. So example four, incorrect indentation, quite a common uh, sort of problem that throws up a syntax error. Now we have example five, missing parentheses. Parentheses are brackets here. So if we type in, we'll go down here, or rather here, num equals int, input, enter a number, and then on the next line, j equals zero, it says syntax error, invalid syntax. Um, now, with experience, you realise that it's actually about this missing parentheses here. So there's two open brackets here, and you need two closed brackets. So the back brackets are unbalanced. So we rewrite this statement, num equals int, input, enter a number, one close bracket, two close bracket, and then it runs saying enter a number, nine. And here we've just typed in j equals zero. So here we have five examples that produce syntax errors. So now we look at runtime errors. A runtime error occurs whilst the program is running and the program crashes. So the program does run, unlike in a syntax error, when the program doesn't even run, and the program crashes though. So we will see example six, where we see division by zero produces a runtime error, and it's quite a common example of how a runtime error is produced. And example seven, where we try to access an index in an, in an array, which does not exist. And again, this is quite a common method of producing a runtime error. Okay, we are looking at runtime errors. Example six, division by zero. Num equals 10 divided by zero. And the system throws up an error. Division by zero here. So, if we rewrite that saying num equals 10 divided by 1, print num, it comes out with the output 10. So the system does not like division by 0. Let's have an another look of some another example which brings up a runtime error. Example 7, accessing an item in an array which does not exist. Now we have here an array 
called or list called temp and that's equal to 19, 20, 21, that's the contents of this list or array. If we want to access the first element, we say print temp 0, we get 19. If we want to access the second element, we say print temp 1, we get 20. If we want to access the third element, we say print temp 2, we get 21. Now, if we want to access the fourth element, which in fact does not exist, we say print temp 3 and we get an error message which says index error, list index out of range. So it's trying to access an item or an index which does not exist. And again, this is a very common runtime error. Last but not least, we look at logical or logic errors. A logic error is a mistake in a program source code that results in an incorrect result. As mentioned before, it does produce a result, but it's an incorrect result. An example would be incorrect formula for area of a circle, and we will see that in example 8. So here we see the logical error, example 8. Pi equals 3.142, radius of the circle is 10, and here we have the formula area of circle equals pi times radius asterisk asterisk 3, which means pi r cubed. Print area of the circle and it gives 3142 units squared. Now we know, or we should, when we make a program, we should have an uh, we should actually make an estimate of what kind of output we expect. And 3142, well, what is the area of a circle? It's actually pi r squared, isn't it? So we're expecting something like r squared is 100 times pi is 314. So we're expecting something like 341. So this is an order of magnitude bigger by 10 times, really. So this is obviously incorrect. So if we look at the formula, we see we've written pi r cubed here, pi times radius times cubed. It should actually be pi times radius times squared. So the, let us put in the correct formula, area of circle equals pi times radius squared. Radius asterisk asterisk 2 means radius squared. And then we print the area of the circle, which is 314.2 units squared. And this is more correct.